So what do you do when you've bought a whacking great big, whacking great big model kit for a studio scale recreation that you're doing, i.e. my hairdryer ship, um, and you've gone to quite an expense to get it, um, only to use two tiny parts. Um, number one, you could either just blank it from your memory or you can do something with it. And so this is the start of a new build and I have absolutely no idea where I'm going to go with this. But uh, yeah, this is the Airfix 124 scale P51D Mustang. As I say, this was readily available in the 70s. It's what Matt Irving used. He used a couple of tiny bits on the hairdryer ship and um, I wanted to make that ship as uh, authentic as possible. So yeah, I splurged, but I'm left with the whole model minus two tiny bits, one machine gun and, um, oh, I can't even remember what the other bit was. It was so inconsequential. So as I say, no idea where I'm gonna go, but I have all these bits to play with and I think this is the only time I've ever seen in any uh, documentation on uh, models being built that the Mustang was used. Um, so because of that, that offers me up tons and tons of parts, which I'm going to be using on other model projects. But I want to start something and um, I'm thinking the, the basis will be the main shape. So I think I'm going to snip, start snipping things off, have a little play around, and then I'll come back. So I've had a good rummage and a think, and to quote a baldrick, I have a cunning plan using the two whole halves and the wings. And uh, I'm going to glue them together and then come back and uh, reveal more. Right, so this is my plan. There's the main body of the Mustang. What I'm gonna do is I'm turning it upside down and around. This is gonna be the front of the spaceship, like so. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut along here, remove all that. This is gonna be the back of the spaceship and this is where the engines are gonna be. Now, the original plan was to get the wings can't really show you properly but sort of have them angled up like that all right but i realized when looking head on it looked like the star wars is it the arc 170 um fighter uh, ship from the um prequels so i didn't want that so I think what I'm going to do, and again, with scratch building, you can change your mind as much as you want. I was umming and ahhing about if this is going to be the, like the cockpit in there, what should I do here? And actually, what I quite like are the actual rear wings. Can you see it? I quite like them like that. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave them on, all right? Um, busy them up and try and take away from uh, what they are. And then what I think I'm gonna do is once I've cut that off, I've got to fill that area in and that area in. But up here, I might actually have one of the wings as a dorsal fin. And then I might use some of the other little wings dotted along either that way or that way. Now that looks, looks, looks daft that way. So I'm going to use as many wings, I think, as I, I, I think, as I can. Um, so I'm going to come back when I've cut that up and filled some spaces in. So this is as far as I'm going <clears throat> with the, uh, the Mustang main parts. Um, I've got to turn it around that way. So this is the way the spaceship's going to look. It's going to look like that. All right. Um, what I've done here is I've, I've cut off this piece here. It's the bottom of the wings and I've cut it off there, cut the wings off because I wanted that piece there, right? So that's that. 
Next thing I've got to do is blank that bit off. I have a plan about what I'm going to do next to continue the body. But the first thing to do is blank that off, pull that down like so, and then uh, I'll be starting to add new bits. Okay, you can see I have blocked off that with some plastic card. Not too uh, smoothly, but that doesn't matter because you're not going to see any of that. And that's because that's the front, that's the middle. And for the back, what I'm using are a couple of the uh, Space Shuttle uh, booster rockets. But what I've done is I've cut them and that's because they are going to go on sort of like that. All right, so I'll come back once they're on and I can show you what my next plan will be. Right, a lot more progress now. <clears throat> These are the, the shuttle booster rockets which are now in place, as you can see. Okay, and you can see now I've started the task of filling in the gaps. So we just got a plain bit of plastic card there. I'm gonna look for suitable um, kit parts, you know, bits of uh, aircraft, stuff like that. Anything that's got rivets on as well, because, you know, we've got all this, these panel lines with rivets. The, um, these uh, shuttle booster rockets have ridges on them, so that's tying it in. Um, you can see I've glued that down to cover that bit up. I've got to cover these up, and I might have to cut the, This is where the wheels went. Um, I might get their uh, covers and cut them down to fill that bit in. I've got to fill that. I've got to kind of like just start blending stuff together before I then do the fun part of putting uh, lots of greeblies on. So I'm almost done with covering up the gaps. Got to do a little bit more here. And then it will be attaching the wings and attaching the details. Okay, so I'm starting at the front and working my way back. So I wasn't going to stick the wings on. I mean, I mean look, if you turn it around like that, you can see that it's a World War II fighter plane. If you turn it that way around, I actually quite like the wings like that, all right? So I've put them on, put some rod, as you can see in that bit there where the other bit of the wing was meant to go. I put the odd kit piece on, all right? Those two holes I'm leaving like that, I'm gonna do something more to that. I've got something in mind for there. More kit pieces up here. This is or move a googly eye yeah look I found these are th these are brilliant for domes uh, once painted they make for brilliant domes only trouble is they make a noise as they will still be moving around under the paint so that's the front I'm gonna slowly start working my way down and down and down and down till I reach there even though I've been distracted by other projects, I'm still adding little bits and pieces uh, here to this ship. And I think I'm almost done with the main part. Um, I think the next thing to do is add some wings because you can never have enough wings. He's got three already, um, but uh, you can never have enough. And then I think I'm going to leave any more detail into uh, be a case of striping once the colors are on. Well, as I'm um, doing this ship with a view to selling it, hopefully, um, I need to have a display base. So <clears throat> there's the clear canopy in which I've drilled a hole. And there is a piece off of a Tamiya kit, um, which I've drilled through. And we have this clear rod now just got to cut it to size and uh, put that onto an MDF base. But we're getting there. We're not far off. I've just got to stick a wing 
coming down each side here just to break the uh, the straight lines of it up a bit more all right with the lower wings on i think it's time for primer i was going to go just um in that gray primer and have it as part of the rebel fleet from star wars because it's got a bit of that with the front hasn't it but uh I'm also thinking 70s science fiction paperback cover, Peter Elson, Chris Foss, um, which equals outlandish colour schemes. So, yeah, and I'm, 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 I'm amassing a lot of spray cans now. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to put some grey on and I think I'm going to go colourful. Well, I know I said um, I, I would do it in a 70s style, but I'm really liking the grey primer. I think this might be Battleship Grey. All right, so all painted, um, and I'm happy enough with the amount of decals I've put on it now. Um, and also to supplement the, the red areas that I've painted, I've also put on lots of red self-adhesive tape, and also black and also white. Um, Next step before weathering, you can see here, the self-adhesive tape is wonderful stuff, um, but boy, it's shiny. So everything needs a coat of matte varnish before I can properly get into the weathering. All right, that's all the shininess gone. So that's good. Um, so onto the weathering. And um, I'm not gonna weather it the way I normally do, with washes and stuff and, and what have you. I am going to do it the way I did it with this ship, which is all pastels. All right, this is going to be a pastel ship. Well, there's been so many other projects going on, um, I've forgotten to update, but uh, here we are. Here's the Mustang ship, as I'm calling it, finished. Um, all the pastel weathering that I said I was going to be putting on, I have put on. So she's all done. What I've done is made, made a custom base because, um, you know, I'm selling this. So it's not like, oh, I'll finish, just put it on the shelf. I've got to uh, um, make it with a view to selling it. So this is just an MDF base, uh, drilled a hole for the clear acrylic rod. Um, and then there's a tank wheel and a bit of tubing. Just painted that all in nondescript black. So uh, there we go. The last thing I did, um, there were two holes. Oh, there were two holes here, and I needed to cover them up. So um, I tr I've gone to my tried and tested uh, route of sticky gems because they catch the light, and it actually looks like we're, we've got a bit of illumination going on inside, which there isn't. So there we go. That's the Mustang ship. I had a lot of fun um, working out how I'm going to use this big bulk of the 124 scale. Mustang that I just uh, left lying around after using the bits I needed uh, from it. So there we go. As I say, uh, th this was a, this was built with a view to selling, and uh, this evening I'm going to put it on on um, on eBay UK. So uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs>